For the past several months, students from Richland's Three Rivers Homelink School have been preparing for the National Engineer Week Future City competition by designing, researching, and building their city of the future. The program provides the students with a theme they must follow and build their city around. This year's theme was to provide affordable green housing to an area that has been devastated by a natural or financial disaster. Accompanying the students alongside this journey is engineer Ben Volk. Ben's role is to help the students think of ideas pertaining to how the city might work and then make sure those ideas fit within engineering guidelines. Easier said than done when you realize these eager minds are building their interpretations of a city 150 to 200 years in the future. I tell them, you know, think about when Lewis and Clark came through here 200 years ago, they wouldn't have imagined any kind of roads or airplanes or, you know, any uh, cell phones or any of the conveniences that we have today. And so I, the kids kind of think outside the box. So as long as there's not some physical law of physics that kind of defies what they're trying to do, but other than that, I, I just let them run kind of roughshod and I try to direct them and, and get them to hone in on ideas. There are five basic parts of the program. First, the students have to build a computer model of their city using the popular computer game, The Sims 4. Their computer city has to meet several real-life standards like quick traffic commute times, proper zoning, nice roads, businesses and schools, or citizens will move out of town. After their virtual city is thriving, it's time to start building their physical model. To give the students a better understanding of how a city operates and to learn about infrastructure, Bill Volk will bring in local city planners and architects to talk with the students and give them ideas. We came out with our design for the city around November. It was, we weren't really sure. We had an idea of where we would put our city. We decided on Panama City, Florida, but we weren't sure how we were going to deal with the theme, which was providing a home for people that had been displaced from their homes. So we came up with the idea for our city to move. And we were just brainstorming in the classroom one day, and I was just writing on the whiteboard, you know, here we'd like something that would house this many people. And so one of the kids put his hand up in the back and said, how about if we use the space elevator? And I looked at him like, what do you mean? Right now, uh, our city is on a space elevator, and right now NASA is holding a race to, can, who, to who can build the first space elevator. So I'm looking about 50 years, we'll be seeing space elevators and maybe a hundred years from now we w might actually be seeing uh, mobile cities like what we have. Let me be the first to welcome you to Peregrine. Standing as tall as the Seattle Space Needle, Peregrine can provide refuge for 10,000 people after any natural disaster. The amazing idea is these mobile cities are attached to a space station and stored in the thermosphere some 10,000 kilometers in the sky. After a disaster decimates an area, a space elevator will pull Peregrine to that location in a matter of minutes. The inverted pyramid shape of Peregrine allows the city to take up a modest piece of land, allowing a devastated city to rebuild around it. Peregrine is completely covered on the outside by photovoltaic panels, which collect and convert sunlight to electricity. The city rotates to best catch the sun's rays. Inside Peregrine, you'll find all the amenities of a real city schools, libraries, shopping centers, recreation, even the jobs of displaced residents will continue while they are living inside Peregrine. The amazing ideas of these students not only impress their engineering mentor, but the judges at the regional competition. Three Rivers Homelink's Peregrine won first place. I was just really excited. I had a great time at the competition. When we found out that we won, I was even more excited. A win at regionals gave the students an all-expenses-paid trip to Washington, D.C. and a spot to compete in the national competition. While in D.C., the students visited Congress and the National Monument. But perhaps the most exciting memory was made when Fox 5 news reporter Holly Morris interviewed the students live on national television. This is the Washington State team, and uh, welcome to Washington, D.C. Thank you guys for coming here. Okay. That was kind of awesome to be on live national TV, uh, very amazing. I've never had that experience until now, um, so it's very, it's awesome. Tell me your name. I'm Sean Thompson. Okay, Sean, what was the biggest challenge you found? It was pretty neat that we got to be on the, international, the national news. She asked us what our city was like, how it dealt with the theme. The students didn't place in the top five at the national level, but they did an amazing job of representing their state, school, and themselves. 
The students learned values including problem solving and teamwork, and they fostered skills including research, oral and written presentation, and practical applications for their math and science skills. I think it's a really good way for kids to be introduced to engineering and math. At first, when we started the competition, I was fairly nervous about talking in front of a crowd, but I think this program is good for helping kids grow into being good public speakers. And I think it's a skill no matter, even if they don't go into engineering, even if they go into business or you know, filmmaking or whatever it is, those public speaking skills will help them in the future.